In October 1969, defendant erected an in-ground swimming pool on plaintiff's property. The pool collapsed on March 15, 1973, and on January 7, 1974, plaintiff commenced an action for damages alleging negligence as well as breach of warranty, express and implied. Defendant's motion for summary judgment was granted on the ground that both causes of action were time barred. No appeal was taken, wherefore the correctness of that determination is not before the court. In June of 1974, plaintiff commenced the present action setting forth similar facts and alleging that defendant was made was liable under the theory of strict products liability. Defendant again moved for summary judgment, which again was granted special term taking the view that plaintiff was stopped from maintaining the action by the prior judgment and that the action was barred by the applicable statute of limitations. While special term did not articulate its reasons for holding plaintiff to be stopped, it appears that it intended to hold that there is no difference in substance between an action based on strict products liability and an action based on breach of warranty. There is language to that effect in some of the cases. In Mendel versus Pittsburgh, Plate Glass Company, 25 New York 2nd, 340, the majority in the Court of Appeals expressed its belief that strict liability in tort and implied warranty in the absence of privity are merely different ways of describing the very same cause of action. Subsequently, the Court of Appeals adopted the theory of strict products liability in Codling versus Paglia, 32, New York 2nd, 330, 345, New York Supplement 2nd, 461, and more recently expounded on the evolution of the doctrine in Victorson v. Buck Laundry Machine Company, 37 New York 2nd, 395. In Victorson, the opinion for the court denied that Codling had created or discovered a new cause of action, but rather characterized that case as having extended a remedy and having recognized in the modern guise a pre-existing theory of liability which had been evolving and maturing over the years, sometimes having been described by use of the phrase breach of implied warranty. Victorson versus Buck, in the present case, a determination of the motion for summary judgment requires an analysis of the complaint to ascertain whether or not it does state a distinct cause of action known as strict products liability, and further a determination of whether or not the appropriate statute of limitations would be the three-year period running from the time when injury to the property was incurred as is provided in CPLR 214. In terms of legal analysis, the two questions raised are actually interdependent because the choice of the statute of limitations ordinarily will flow from the legal determination of whether the complaint in the present case states a cause of action in contract or tort strict products liability. Nevertheless, in the recent Victorson case, the court, after concluding that the cause of action was founded in tort, went on to consider what would be an appropriate period of limitation. It appears established that a contractor who undertakes to construct additions to real property may be considered a manufacturer for purposes of strict products liability. See Inman versus Binghamton Housing Authority. Three, New York 2nd, 137, 
164, New York Supplement, 2nd, 699. Accordingly, the defendant herein would fall within the case class of people who may be held responsible upon a theory of strict products liability. In the recent Victorson case, the court used language which indicates that a customer might have a direct cause of action based upon strict products liability, separate and distinct from the contract where he suffers personal injury or property damage as a result of defective goods purchased. Hey, 